Hey, people. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Okay. A couple little things about uh, what we're going to be doing today. First of all, oh. I didn't know that this was an Australian joint. I yeah. uh, saw the trailer, thought it was going to suck. Um, I'm a moron uh, because it didn't. I played my first show in four years last night, so I'm a little <laughs> tired. Uh, but other than that, welcome to Loathsome Things, <laughs> a horror movie podcast. Oh my God, I'm so bad at this. Uh, <laughs> where we talk about, uh, you know, films and uh, sometimes we say nice things and sometimes we don't. My name is John and with me as always is my co-host Josh. Josh, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing quite well. I uh, actually, the thing that got me interested in this is I saw someone talk about how very Australian this movie was, and I was like, "Oh, really? Neat." And um, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's. There are things that I really like about the movie, but there are other things I really dislike about the movie. Ooh, we'll get into it. Our ratings <laughs> might actually diverge this time. Ooh, hey, it's, uh, instead of, uh, instead of, like, so normally after the, we say, all right, and then the movie ends, then we talk about it for a long time, then we give our rating, then we talk about our rating for a little while, sometimes I just say the same thing over again, once the movie, we get to the end of the movie, let's just say our ratings real quick, and then, like, chop it up. Good idea. Nice! <laughs> oh, and, you know, that, that, that brings up a question, um, what? Because... I, Question. I Would know that, that and the, all the people that listen to the show, they never yeah. check to see Nary. what the episode is about. They just hit play. So yeah. because of that, do you think you might let the fine folks know what we're covering this week? Yeah, we are covering Danny and Michael Philippou's <laughs> Talk to Me from, I guess, 2022 or something. I don't know. That's what IMDb says. It's a... Australian, it like it's got creepy pasta yeah. elements, but it's also like what if creepy pasta was a party drug, and also familial tragedy is hard to cope with, and uh, mental health is important. Yeah, self care. I. It's yeah. It's kind of like I, I know what you empty manned last smile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It Baba Dukes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Danny and Michael Filippo uh, haven't really <laughs> haven't really done a whole heck of a lot. They made the uh, TV series Raka. Which, uh, yeah, I've Raka heard, Raka Raka Raka, that's right. Which I've heard is good, haven't seen it, probably won't. Um, yeah, and then they both worked on Baba Duke because in Australia everybody works on everybody else's project, so that's just yeah. you can take how that how that just could have meant they stirred noodles for people, you know. <laughs> well, it did say like electrical, so I mean, I guess it, you know, I get uh, electric stove noodles, yeah, they ran the water kettle or something, man. Electric stove noodles would definitely be a good rock band. <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> Electric stove noodles. John, what do you know about Rocka Rocka? Uh, fuck all. I don't really know anything about it. I the name rings a bell, and I think I I, I want to say I had read somewhere that it was supposed to be a good show, but I don't know shit about it. What about you? Well, I, I looked into it. It's not what you would call a TV show as oh. much as what you would call a YouTube channel. Oh, that's where they got their billion views or whatever? Yeah, so they're literally some of those people. I don't know if you've heard of them. It always annoyed me whenever I stumbled upon it. They're the, some of those people that got super rich with their like YouTube or whatever channel and then moved into a mansion together to be able to create content more easily, like in like a commune of creativity, which sounds neat. Uh, until then they got demonetized, I don't know what for, and they got evicted from their uh, mansion and then I guess decided let's make a movie. Oh, okay. And, and that's this. I mean, this 
so far, just going off of what we have so far, and the trailer, which just looked like it was going to be more teen schlock, which it kind of yeah. is, but um, yeah. I mean, it 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 should just be terrible, you know. But yeah. I, I I surprisingly actually enjoyed it because you know I I know there there should have been things about it that you know I mean there's some things in there that we'll talk about, but. Overall, I actually enjoyed it, but th- the two guys, I I don't even want to know anything about them because they just they sound and look like total assholes. Oh yeah, did you watch that thing where like it's them fighting at the top of their IMDb page or whatever? Is that I, what you're talking about? I, I saw <laughs> it and I just was I just saw pictures of them and I was like, nope, mm-mm, not going yeah. there. No, no, yeah. those Danny those guys have Michael. been been to too many raves. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're twins. They're Australian, I think. I don't know. And uh, apparently, in this movie, like race is just not a. It never comes up. Mm-mm. No, no, it doesn't. Yeah. It's just, it's just adventurous ethnic and diverse people mm-hmm. versus the uh, the nice white people that just want to have a nice family and be left alone. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> wow <laughs> it's good uh, this movie stars Sophie Wilde as Mia uh, Joe Bird as Riley Alexandra Jensen as Jade and Miranda Otto as the mom Miranda Otto you might recognize as Eowyn the shield maiden and the female warrior that could actually strike down a ring wraith from the Lord of the Rings cinema <laughs> films and every other film ever made She's she's been in like Every Australian film, it seems like she's a, definitely a veteran. She's good. She's a really good actor. Yeah. Um, I mean, there yeah. were some good performances, and you know, and then there were just some some stock horror performances, and you know. But I thought Sophie Wilde did a really good job overall. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, she's uh, yeah. So that I mean, that was that was a plus for me. Yeah, I mean, I I felt like everyone did a great job. Uh, she was great. Joe Bird as the little kid Riley. Excellent. Good job. Like, I totally believed that little Tom Lord York looking motherfucker was, you know, possessed by <laughs> something. Uh, the girl that played Jade, she, she was one of the more stock characters. Uh, Daniel, the boyfriend yeah. slash ex-boyfriend slash we don't know exactly what he is. Yeah, him, whatever. And then there yeah. was, you know, the cast of the... The Christian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then there were all the degenerates. There was the... Uh, the Maori guy, and then there was the uh, yeah. trans person, and it's like, wow, you covered all the bases, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guess which ones are the bad ones? I know. The ill-behaved youth <laughs> versus the well-behaved youth. <laughs> no kidding. Jesus Christ. <sighs> yeah. But... But yeah, I mean, it's it's good. Definitely, if you haven't watched it, go go watch it. Uh, I mean, it's it's got some upsetting. It's it's gory mm-hmm. at times. It's um, it's got issues of uh, suicide and self harm. Sure. Um, it it plays off of mental health, unwellness, and and all kinds of stuff. All right, I'm gonna kick it into. Uh, the toilet spins the other direction gear. <laughs> nice. All right. At the beginning of the movie, there's some, like, Thor-looking ass motherfucker. He's <clears throat> going to an absolute rager to look for his brother. Uh, he finds his brother. His brother looks like he's been scraped up in a skateboarding accident or something. He's being weird. As they're leaving, the brother grabs a knife that we were shown earlier, stabs his brother, his Thory brother, right in the chest, and then runs himself right through the eye socket. Does this scene matter? No. Um, (laughs) later, Mia and her family are... I guess celebrating her mother's remembrance day. We'll find out later. Uh, she talks to her aunt about something and it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, we see that she has trouble communicating with her dad and it doesn't matter. Uh, but then Riley, her best friend's little brother calls her to come pick him up. She, uh, goes, uh, apparently it's because his older sister and her best friend Jade forgot to pick him up. Uh, Riley and his friend are at a skateboard park where they're 
they experience what is basically a public service announcement about the dangers of cigarettes and <laughs> bullying. It's very uncomfortable. <laughs> then Mia picks up Riley. They uh, sing a, <laughs> a Sia song because she's Australian. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Uh, and until they encounter a wake and fright kangaroo dying in the middle of the road, there's a whole thing like we have to put it out of his misery, but Mia has a problem with death and can't bring herself to do it. And so they drive away and we just hear it making horrible whimpering noises in the road. And I was reminded of trauma we both experienced earlier this year when we watched. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no to God. <laughs> It's like, yeah. It also made me realize that kangaroo are basically like the deer of Australia. Like seeing it in the road, I was like, oh, a deer. Oh, wait, no, it's not. It's a roo. <laughs> it's a roo. <laughs> <laughs> Mia and her best friend Jade do girl stuff on a bed, uh, talking about stuff. Uh, Mia is, we see how close Mia is with Jade and with Riley and with Jade and Riley's mom, who they do like, forehead snuggles and talk about <laughs> death and stuff yeah. uh and then all of the kids sneak out even though the mother knows they're doing it and tells them not to do it and knows that they're doing it anyway they still sneak out by just leaving through the front door uh they go to a party where these alluded to videos will be made they're like oh yeah they're gonna make these videos they've they've been they've been you know like what is it uh forgery or whatever the word is for for making these fake videos where it looks like a thing is happening they're going to a party where that's gonna go down uh yeah. and then there's some social dynamics it's the the situation is just ripe for uh uh peer pressure and um mia ends up volunteering to do the thing the thing we don't know what it is unless we watch the trailer and everyone cheers so they tie her to a chair and they pull out the, the, the fucking, like, mannequin hand that's covered in Sharpie marker paraffin, or marginalia. And uh, they're like, all right, we, you light the candle. That, that, uh, that opens the door. And then we're going to blow out the candle to close the door. In between there, you're going to grab the hand. You're going to say, talk to me. That's going to let you see the ghost. Then you're going to say, I let you in, and that brings possession into your heart. Um, and they're like, yeah, and you can only stay in that state for 90 seconds, uh, otherwise a bad thing. So they bring out the hand, she holds it, she's talked to me, she sees a dead guy across from her and freaks out. Everyone laughs, it's a great time, she's freaking out, not having a great time. But then peer pressure does does a number on the situation and do it do it so she does it again and this time she says i let you in her eyes go black her skin gets freaky she's possessed she looks at riley and she starts going they like you he's behind you now he'll split you pretty boy he'll split you run 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 over and over again and uh, just then they yoink the hand away from her just before like they're maybe not just in time it gets questionable and she like comes back to and she's like wow that was amazing yeah she's like really into it well yeah and then zoe says oh we went a little bit over so yeah yeah but that's right after all of that mia is is like really excited about it like she just had yeah. a great time like these people are really fucking stupid. I mean, <laughs> if, if if you saw, I mean, I don't know exactly how much they see and don't see. I mean, obviously the visions that Mia has when she's, you know, under, they don't see. But they do see when she like, I think when she leans back and her eyes turn all black and look all freaky. And they all just think it's hilarious. It's like they're yeah. passing passing a bottle of Rush around or something. It's, I don't yeah. know, it's, they're playing you hit with a demon hand. <laughs> yeah. yeah it made me think of like whippets or uh salvia where it's like you know like everyone like sit around and watch that person do the funny get high thing for like a few seconds and then it's over and now it's someone else's turn yeah these are people i don't want to hang with at all no <laughs> um yeah riley of course is you know because he's the only sensible one there is completely freaked that well jade is too but he's completely freaked the fuck out so great so we get back to jade's house 
uh, we Mia's in the living room. It's at night, you know, and there's they have axolotls and. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was like, all right, Fucking cool. Australia. <laughs> God damn it! It's storming real heavily. Uh, Riley's all spooked out because of what he's seen, so he wants to come over and hang with Mia. Um, so they're hanging out on the couch, which turned into a bed. I don't really, I don't understand how that happened. Did it fold out or something? I've never seen a couch turn into a bed before, John. Uh, yeah, I guess that's what it was. Um, anyways, so they're, yeah, they're, they're on the couch bed, whatever that is. <laughs> I don't wanna, what is this couch bed thing? I don't understand. Um, yeah, again, Mia's talking about how, you know, she was really into this hand business. And then she, then yeah. she starts getting deep and starts telling Riley about how her mom OD'd on sleeping pills and that she probably did it on purpose, and how they could hear her on the other side of the door, and there was, like, scratches on the floor and stuff. Uh. And <laughs> sounds really horrible. Um, yeah. Later, uh, they, you know, they go to sleep. Everybody goes to bed, whatever. Uh, Riley's sleeping. Uh, and Mia's, you just see, like, Mia's kind of demon-y-looking bloody hand reach over and to touch his face, and then it cuts. Wow, that was really scary. Um, <laughs> we cut to daytime. It's at school. As kids are in school, uh, Jade is really uh, has decided that she wants to have the uh, the hand business done back at her place. Yeah. Okay. What? Okay. I don't. Is she trying to be cool, or I don't remember what her reasoning was. It, it's because the the reason given is that boy Christian boyfriend guy wants to do it now. Oh, Daniel. Yeah. Yeah showed she wants to make her boyfriend happy which uh also happens to be uh mia's ex-boyfriend okay great that's fantastic yeah they held hands once yeah yeah that's right yeah. whatever it's stupid kids are, <laughs> kids are suck <Yeah>. so um <laughs> sorry so anyways so the first kid shows up and and uh jade's mom sue is already like you know Oh, you guys having a party? That's cool. I mean, it's cool if you're having a party. I don't care. You know, and the kid's yeah. like, no, we're not having a party. She tries, it's really funny because she tries that with several people and they're all just like, no. Yeah. <laughs> she's trying to, she's trying to trick them. Hey, so-and-so said you guys are having a party. Just make sure that you take care of the place or whatever. And they're like, no, we're not having a party. What are you talking about? It was, yeah. It's kind of funny. I like the half bully kid was like, if we're, if there's a party, I'm definitely drinking. She's like, oh, yeah. you, is that the dog that smells bad or is it you? <laughs> <laughs> she totally knows it's a party, which I think is hilarious. And then yeah. she leaves and the gang arrives and, you know, they have a party. Um, yeah. Sort of. Uh, so they're all hanging out. They're talking about the hand thing and, you know, their this experience. And that this guy, Joss, the uh, Maori, the giant Maori guy, says that he got it from his friend. Uh, who I guess would be Duncan's brother, I think is who he gets it from. But he doesn't talk about it until later. Duncan's yeah. the guy that kills himself at the beginning of the movie. He got it from the guy that killed himself at the beginning oh. of the movie. Oh, okay. And, and Dun he, it was from Duncan. Yeah. Is it Duncan? Or is it... I thought it was like, duck it. Or maybe it was I duck can't it. understand what they say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyways... <laughs> Yeah, he talks about how he got. Oh yeah, I just I just gave it to me, you know. And uh, yeah, they really are stupid. And then Daniel decides he's going to take a turn, and so they do the whole thing. Say it. He grabs a hand. Talk to me. And there, everybody's filming it with phones. Even though earlier Mia had said, you know, I'm going to I want to do it again, but no phones this time. But then yeah. basically the whole thing devolves. Well, okay. First off, first off, Daniel <laughs> does the thing. He says, I let you in, and he becomes, like, choke-possessed with his head yeah. looking up straight up, and they, everybody, you know, Jade is freaking out, like, stop it, we gotta make it stop. And they're like, no, it's just fun watching people choke with demon possession. <laughs> and, I mean, the kids just, they're all like, they think it's hill-fucking areas. It's really <laughs> weird. And <laughs> then there's, then he, Daniel says in his demon voice, he hates it when you touch him. <laughs> And so good. <laughs> I like when somebody goes, yo, this spirit's a cunt. Yeah. <laughs> then we get a close up of Daniel's uh, pimple laden face. Oh. And he's he gets he starts getting all like demorgasmic where he's like 
making all these gross, like, you know, sexy sounds and stuff, and everybody's laughing at him. And then he falls on the floor, and he's still, like, full into this state. And then he starts making out with the bull, you know, okay. So he's, like, tongue-kissing a bulldog. And they f- they finally unhand him. <laughs> And he, he sits up and he's got, like, slobber all over his face. It's so disgusting. <laughs> they, and they put the dog away. Yeah, it's it's slobber and it's, fur. It's, it's so It's really gross. disgusting. <laughs> they, he, he demands that they delete the phone footage, which, of course, nobody's going to do that. And then from here, this is then it just, the whole thing devolves into a giant demon handing party where everyone's taking turns and they're filming it all. They're, they're just complete fucking idiots, these people. It's literally a musical montage with, like, a song, and it's just, just like, a clip of them doing this, and then someone's like, eh, the hand is like my dick, and then another person's using it to smoke a joint. It's just an amazing scene. It really is. It's hilarious how stupid they are. They, they like... <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's great. So, they, yeah, so then Riley decides that he wants to take a shot at it, and, of course, Jade is not having it she's freaking out and somehow i think mia proposes that they only do it for 60 seconds because if you if you reach 90 seconds then lots of horrible demon things happen that no one really explains but if you do it less it's fine so if you cut it down by a third then it should be okay for a kid of riley's age i think that's you know you are you have to be you you have to have the, this many seconds to ride. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really about body mass. Yeah, that's it. that's exactly <laughs> it. Um, so first, before we go anywhere, we have to have the you know requisite fight between Jade and Riley. They fight. Jade storms out. Great. Now they can do whatever the fuck they want. And they've got it down to they've worked it down to fifty seconds, which is a compromise. Yeah. And uh, yeah. he goes under, does the hand thing, and then. His version of the demon thing is being all apologetic with this woman's voice and then blah, blah, blah. Suddenly you realize that it's Mia's mother or something that sounds like Mia's mother who's, you know, like, I miss you so, so much, me. And all yeah. that, all this crap. Of course, Mia falls for it, which is ridiculous. I th- yeah. But in every one of these dumb, like, movies where someone channels something evil... And then the evil thing pretends to be someone that they they miss. They fall for it every time. I mean, it's a trope. You know. It's it's like it's such a part of almost every horror movie that it makes you wonder. Like, I'm sorry, does someone have actual experience with this? Is that exactly what would happen in real life? Because, and of course, the answer is no. Because I mean, I don't know, man. Have you? Have you watched people go to those, like, big, like, healing pastor things where it's like, there's someone in an audience, their toe hurts, and Jesus loves them, and now their toe is all better! (laughs) Yeah, that's good stuff. Faith healing? (laughs) Yeah, people totally, literally fall down for that shit. That's true. People are dumb. Uh, (laughs) So... (laughs) Mia just wants to believe it, I guess. I don't because it's yeah. I mean, I guess that's the point. Is she's so traumatized by the loss of her mother that you know, I I guess that is how a lot of people would react. I mean, you desperately want the person back, so you know maybe even though the kid is clearly possessed by a demon, in this case, it's his, it's her mom's ghost. Great. Yeah. So she's in shock now. Oh no, wait. Before that, that's right. Before that. This is why she goes into shock. <laughs> because, um... <laughs> you just skipped a little part. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of important. Um, Riley gets stuck on the word got. 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 And he locks up. Like, freezes up. And then, all of a sudden, he, he like, s- slides his chair out. And then, just... Oh, first he bashes his head on the desk really hard. Yeah. It's really disgusting. Um, slides his chair over across the room. Start bashing again. Then he digs into his face and, like, pulls his eyeball out. <laughs> and, yeah, I guess the chair, like, shoots itself across the floor. Then he he's over by the window and he just bashes himself unconscious, essentially. And it's just yeah. into this bloody pulp, which I thought he was dead, but no. Oh, no. He's still alive. <laughs> uh, Mia's... Only mostly dead. <laughs> <laughs> Mia wanders off because she's in shock and probably feeling guilty because it, it really is her fault. And uh, she, he, you hear this like demony <laughs> weird sound, 
and she looks over and there's like a door and there's a kind of a blurry pane of glass and she sees her mom what looks like her mom on the other side okay that's whatever in the meantime you know they've now called the police they're there they're interviewing everybody uh jade is talking to her mother over the phone who's like basically just ripping her a new one but she doesn't yeah. really know what's up yet she just knows that riley's hurt or what it was that was a weird phone call um yeah yeah i didn't i didn't really uh i didn't understand that whatever uh, uh mia's dad calls he wants to talk about it she doesn't want to talk about it because she thinks her dad is a dick and uh, yeah. that, that he's hiding something <laughs> from her which he is uh, and so we find that out pretty much right away. Uh, she goes home. Yeah, he wants to talk about it. No, whatever. Don't care. She's smuggled the hand out with her. So now she has yeah. the hand. Back at the hospital, uh, Jade and her mom, Sue, are at Riley's bedside. Uh, Christian Daniel shows up. Uh, he and Jade, uh, they see Mia is in the hallway now. And Jade is all pissed off and yells at her. And then Mia tries to walk into the room and Sue's like, where are you going? The fuck do you think you're doing? <laughs> so you're not getting in there. Fuck you. She blames her because it's, you know, it's her fault. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So that, that, uh, uh, Mia's basically stuck outside the room at the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the apparitions of her mom now get more severe. Yeah. She's seeing her mom in reflections all over the place. And her mom's like calling out to her saying weird shit. <laughs> Uh, so she starts like wandering around the hospital that goes nowhere. Uh, so then she ends up going home and I guess her house is empty and her dad's not there or something. And so she gets Christian, Christian Daniel to go home with her because he also can't go home because his parents don't know this happened because he's 18. So they didn't have to call his parents, mm. but he still doesn't want his parents to know what happened. So he goes home with his girlfriends. The goes home with the girl who's blamed for his girlfriend's little brother's recent maiming. Yeah, and uh, they they like oh compare hands and oh her hand is still a little bit bigger than his and then they fall asleep in a bed together but like head to foot yeah <laughs> yeah like the Christian sixty nine position. <laughs> 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 And uh, she starts having dreams about uh, having sex with him. And within that dream is also weird stuff about, like, watching her mom die and watching her dad, like, pull her mom's body out of the, the room. And all of that's in there together. And, and she's, like, snuggling her cheek up against his leg hair while all of this is happening. And uh, and then she wakes up and there's a ghost in her room and it's like a like a walking dead zombie. And then it just just comes on up and starts sucking on Christian Daniel's foot. Puts the whole Real. front of the foot into its mouth. Oh, yeah. She's deep footing this thing. <laughs> and, and so then Mia's like, wake up, Daniel, wake up, wake up. And he wakes up and then all of a sudden he looks down and he sees there's Mia sucking on his <laughs> foot and he freaks out. She's freaking out. He's like, I le have to leave. And she's like, no, please don't leave me alone. He leaves her alone. She starts freaking out and like slamming her fist into her head over and over mm -hmm. again, clawing her hands against the, the door that he left through. Very similar. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mother oh. Oh. and stuff. Uh, <laughs> and um, and I, here I want to just say that like the sound design on this movie is yeah. phenomenal. It is good. Like this is definitely a movie that if you really feel like getting into it, go ahead and sit down with some headphones and just listen to the full immersion that mm -hmm. they do in here because it is really top-notch yeah. shit. She is freaking out, slapping herself. She decides to do a talk to me all by herself. She gets her mom on the line and uh, she asks, did you kill yourself? She's like, no, not on purpose. I'd never want to leave you. And she tells Mia, Riley needs your help. And so then we see her and her mom, her dead mom, her dead corpsey mom, spooning to sleep on the couch. 
um later at the hospital we are maybe simultaneously we see like the whole family of of white people they're taking care of riley in a a gigantic shower room yeah that, it's just it's it's, it's enormous <laughs> yeah it's like a 10 foot by 10 foot shower room and uh, they're taking care of him. Jade's hand is bandaged because she tried to block his skull with her hand when he was slamming it into the thing, but it like, it like, got her all good. And uh, the mom leaves the room for some reason. I don't remember what. So it's just her and her little brother. And then he starts having a little freak out session and starts. He gets. A, he bites her hand, gets away from her, and starts slamming the back of his head into the shower tiles until it starts cracking and blood starts seeping out of the back of his head and then he starts laughing a little and then reaches his head down and starts lapping up the blood and little bits of ceramic that are going towards the drain. That was great. And then that shifts into just having seizures as the mom gets back in and it's just not going well in Rileyville. No. Um, <laughs> uh, so then, then the youths reconvene to discuss what's happening. And this includes Jade and, and Christian Daniel. Um, they decide there's like, Oh, who to blame you? You are the one that said this. What about all this stuff? What about where did this even come from? They end up tracking down Stabby's brother <laughs> and ride the bus with him so that Mia and Jade can like, b -b 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 please at him. And he's like, all right, look, here's the deal. <laughs> the, the demon's gonna leave his body. Just leave him alone. It's gonna get weaker and weaker and weaker and leave his body. And uh, it's fine. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sad chicken. Yeah. Um, and uh so yeah so it's just just leave him alone and, and his body will kick out the spirits eventually yeah. just don't worry about it yeah 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 and so at this point now they're at a bus stop uh, and mia realizes hey did anyone blow out the candle remember that whole thing where we have to blow out the candle to close the door did anyone do that for riley and they're like nah, i don't remember it was kind of weird and so we've got a new plan now. We're going to have Riley do another talk to me, even though he's catatonic and can't do talking. And uh, But this time we'll close the door. Yeah. New plan. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. What could go wrong? Uh, what could go wrong? I mean, his head... <laughs> his head looks like a giant tomato pincushion. What could go wrong? Um... <clears throat> That's another thing, real quick. Like, the... the, uh, the practical effects of this movie are also top-notch like the sound design and practical effects just this movie looks and sounds great it does they they i don't know what their budget was but they made the most of it um yeah for sure uh well i mean unless it was 50 billion dollars in which case they yeah they really fucked up using the budget um <laughs> <laughs> they're not fiscally nice. responsible um so we're back at the hospital yeah so uh jade uh, rushes mia into the room because Mom's at ma mom's gonna be out for her. she said she'd be out for an hour. It was so stupid. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, whatever. So they rush Mia in and uh, you know, they they Riley looks real, real fucking bad at this point. And uh <laughs> so they basically like hand him, like force hand him, just like put his hand on the hand. Uh, like Mia takes her hand and grabs his hand and puts his hand on the hand hand, and then, <laughs> then they light they light the candle, which apparently it has to be this yellow fucking candle, except yeah. except it doesn't, but it does. So whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mia says talk to him because you know he can't say talk to me. I, they just created a new rule. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. No luck doesn't work. I wonder why. Probably because your new rules bullshit. Uh, yeah. They try it again. For some reason, the second time also doesn't work. Um, Mia decides that she's going to go in herself and then just rescue him, which makes no fucking sense. But that's fine. So right away, the first thing she sees is a little girl sitting on the bed who is supposed to be who? Who's the little just girl? Just a little girl. Okay. That, yeah. Just a little dead girl. A little dead girl sitting on the bed holding her hand. And uh, the little girl shows Mia... Uh, the uh, shunting scene in society um, and that Riley 
warbling meat puzzle of glistening flesh tentacle meat, like pink, ah, screaming, and just, it was beautiful. <laughs> it was a great shot, but, you know, yeah. they did it better in society. <laughs> yeah. I did like that they played with that rule there because whenever she's talking to the little girl, the little girl says, I let you in. Oh, and so yeah. that pulled Mia into like their realm. I was like, oh, that's neat. That's a nice little thing. That's true. Yeah. That's that. Yeah. Good point. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> back at home, Mia's dad wants to, he wants to decide that he's going to come clean. Yeah, that's true. I, uh, I have been hiding some. Of course you have. You're a dick. Um, yeah. Turns out that Mia's mom uh, left her and her dad a suicide letter. Uh, she doesn't want to believe it, but, you know, she did. She He reads the letter. It's pretty standard stuff. He they She basically already knew that her mom had done this, you know. I mean, she even told someone that she killed herself. So I, I don't know why it's suddenly like this traumatizing revelation that her mom left a suicide note. Well, okay, I, I guess I know why it would be traumatizing. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, what the hell is wrong with me? <laughs> wow, <laughs> I'm really jaded over here. <laughs> Fucking suicide note, <laughs> yeah, pussy. <laughs> Get over. Come on, it. me a man up. <laughs> Sack up, me. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to believe all that. And then they have a wonderful, touching moment where they hug. She's seeing in the dis, like you know, beyond them. Her mother, uh, who's telling her that it's it's not true, you know, and uh, so she like bails out. She goes to her room, has a little chitty chat with her ghost mom, who tells her that her dad is actually a demon. It's not her real dad. Um, then she hears some pounding on the door, starts getting louder and louder. You hear like this demon voice. You see the demon dad at the door, but then you also realize that the real dad is still sitting on the couch. Um, Ooh. yeah, so she's being tricked by the evil demon mom and dad who <laughs> bangs the door open. This, this was also great. He like kicks the door open essentially or punches it open or whatever, attacks her. In the meantime, the real dad hears all this because she's screaming and there's this fighting noise going on. So about four and a half, five minutes later, he runs and <laughs> runs up to the door, which is now closed. And yeah. kicks, it's like closed and locked, even though the guy just kicked the door open seconds ago. So then he kicks the door open again, you know, because it's a magic door. Uh, yeah. He sees Mia fighting herself, of course, and she freaks the fuck out because he grabs her. So she busts out a pair of uh, scissors and scissors her dad in the neck and he bleeds to death. Um, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he does you know who could say maybe, who could say <laughs> uh, meantime uh jay thinks that riley is improving oh yeah he's doing great yeah. he, the guy's doing fucking gangbusters but uh mia says no he's really he's in pain he's inside he's hurting um because i saw him shunting and then yeah. mia <laughs> Mia convinces Jade once again, because Jade will basically fall for anything, uh, convinces her to come over to her house. On She's on the phone. Oh, you need to come over here. Um, and then, you know, Jade takes off to go to her house. Of course, Mia is in the parking lot talking to her on the phone. And as Jade leaves, she goes into the hospital so she can have some private time with Riley. You know what I'm talking about? And... Uh, <laughs> She stands over Riley, and, uh, you know, she's got the scissors in her back pocket. Uh, Sue steps in, which I don't know if this was supposed to build tension or whatever, but there's a moment they cry, they apologize to each other. It's stupid. Sue yeah. calls me a family. You know, you, you family, yeah? I don't know. That's British. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're my fucking family. <laughs> Hey, throw another ship on the bar, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, there goes there goes our one Australian what? fan. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my god. Ah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> that fucked me up. <laughs> so 
somehow Mia convinces Sue to give her a moment alone with Riley, which she already had. There was no reason for Sue to come in and have them apologize and cuddle. There was nothing that gained from that. It was stupid. Uh, Mia. What you see, John, oh. you see, hmm? in Australia, the white people oh. Are, oh. are very trusting ah. and good-natured. You mean the, um, the white people that just voted to not give full rights to the aboriginal people? Is that the, those yeah, white people? Yeah. Well, I mean, as you can see in this movie, they can't be trusted. Yeah, dear, dear Australian white people, fuck you. Um, <laughs> God, what a bunch of scumbags! I can't believe they did that. Well, I can, yeah, because they're white. Yeah, they're white people. Yeah. Um, she busts the scissors out. Oh, here we go. Yeah, gonna, <laughs> and then she holds back. She does a lot of that in this movie, which pisses me off. Um, yeah, she sees more demon business. Uh, and oh, she turns around and sees the bloody Rue out in the hall, which is alive and hops away. But that's you know the horrible thing, apparently. Uh. She, Jade, in the meantime, arrives at Mia's house, finds her, her dad. Ha <laughs> ha, he's alive, psych. <laughs> uh, <laughs> gotcha. And, he's just uh, kind of bleeding on the floor. <laughs> she calls her, uh, she calls to warn her mother that, hey, things are really fucked up. Uh, Sue shows up to the hospital, finds that Riley is missing. Uh, Jade arrives at the hospital outside and sees Mia rolling him up a, up a hill in a wheelchair. Um, she gets down to the, like the top of the hill. We look down the hill and it leads down into the L.A. freeway. And yeah, you, you know, <laughs> so she's obviously going to push him down. You know, which is cool. Yeah. I'm I'm like all on board for this. Yeah, uh, she's about to mack in me that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Oh my god, that's fantastic. Um, anyways, so now she's rolling him down the hill, which is lame, because she could have just yeah. let him go. Um, she gets down to where the traffic is, and it's like all, you know, whatever. Um, and then we're supposed to try to, you know, like, is it Mia, or is it the demon? Whatever, because I don't care. And then <laughs> Sue shows up at the top of the hill and, and tells her that... Uh, her, her, no, Sue doesn't show up. Mia's mom shows up in the deep, you know, ghostly Mia mom form. Tells her that she's doing the right thing and that we'll have him forever. And, uh, yeah. and then an- another little fakeroo. You, 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 you hear a car hit something and here's a real shocker. I mean, this one threw me for a loop. It wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> Riley in the wheelchair. It was Mia. Oh, <laughs> got ya. Uh, traffic stops. She stands up because she's cyborg, apparently. She's royally yeah. fucked up, but still alive. Uh, gets up, and then all of a sudden, she just, like, flashes. She's in the hospital again. Uh, things are kind of trippy. It's like kind of, there's like echoey voices in the background. And, you know, it's, it's, it's like she's imagining or whatever the fuck is happening. So she's wandering around. She sees, like, her dad in the hospital walking. She follows him. She sees Jade, Sue, and Riley walking away. Riley's dressed like he's fine. Everything's great. Uh, they walk into a room, and then as they walk off, the lights all go black. And then it's just, the lights all start going out. And suddenly she's by herself in total darkness. And uh, she lights a match because she's carrying a matchbook. Or Hell yeah. Whatever. And uh, she sees a light in the distance, so she goes to the light, and uh, she finds, uh, what's her name from Poltergeist? No, that's not right. <laughs> she sees, I'm so stupid, God, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> she, she walks up and there's a table. She sees a table, and there's a candle on the table, and there's a guy, like a person, excuse me, a hand sticking out. And uh, she walks up, takes the hand. All of a sudden, it switches to her POV. Um, we're in a house somewhere, in some building somewhere, and there's a bunch of Latino dudes who are like, "Orale, way!" Like I didn't know what the hell was going on, and yeah. like they're they've got the hand, they're doing the hand business, and then the guy they they say some stuff that I watched twice and still couldn't pick up any of it because I just didn't care. 
Yeah. I just was like, man, I could watch this a thousand times and I'll never remember what they said. And then the guy holding her hand says, I let you in. And that's the end of the movie. Movie yeah. over. Yeah. That's great. I don't know what the fuck just happened. It's... <laughs> so, I get... I mean, yeah. It, it's pretty standard fare. It's standard demon possession-y type stuff. She's, play, she's got the whole mind fuck thing going on. Ultimately, in the end... It doesn't really make sense. Like they obviously they liked Riley, but maybe they just liked Riley because they could use him to get at her, even though getting at her was incredibly simple because she fell for everything, including the whole hand thing in the first place. They didn't. So then it was like, what is she up against? Is it some sort of demonic force or I mean, I guess that's what it was. It didn't really matter. I think the movie was more about like gotcha moments, you know, sort of. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was it it was kind of thin in a way, and it was kind of a t- teen movie, like the like the trailer makes it appear. I I think overall, I think I just enjoyed it. I liked the the aesthetic of it for some reason. It reminded me a little bit of Smile because there was like the weird like, is it in your head or is it really happening? And then the whole hospital backdrop, at least part of the yeah part of the movie this with this one. But overall, I mean, you know, I. On certain categories, I rated it pretty high. I mean, it's clearly a horror film, so I have to give it a five for that, because it is. Um, yeah. I enjoyed it. I, I think the production values were good. The effects were very good. Those were high ratings for me. The atmosphere, I'm looking at my rating now, and I probably should have rated it lower, but I gave it a four. But that's just because I think I just liked the movie. I think the overall effect worked for me. Uh, place and horror, it doesn't, you know, it's new, so it doesn't have one. Uh, I liked the writing, even though it wasn't really great. Uh, but I gave it a four point three, actually. Four point three. Wow. Yeah. I, nice. I, I, overall, I don't feel like I liked it four point three much, but um, <laughs> but when I add it up, that's what I get. So okay, that's where I'm gonna I'm gonna stand by it. I don't know what was yours. So I gave it a three point one. Okay. Um, and I kind of had the same thing with you. Like there are some categories where I I rated it really high, yeah. and others where it just it is just like the bottom fell out. I think it was really thin, and they tried to butter up some elements, but it yeah. just it never did the thing. I think this would have made a like killer masterpiece of like a twenty minute short film. Which, um, yeah, that, that, that's true. I think that they should have gone with that. I think all of the stuff with her dad was total bullshit just to add time to the movie. Same thing with the whole, like, preamble, the stabby guy and his brother. And, like, that was literally just there to add add additional frames and runtime. Like, it, it didn't have any bearing. It didn't matter. The only way that it mattered was it was like, oh, well, you already knew the answer. Just give it time. So, so then the thing is that this is about how Mia did it shitty. <laughs> like, the, like, there's, there's actual demons or ghosts or whatever that are doing this possession, but when it comes down to it, it's a movie about how Mia didn't handle her shit well. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I forgot to add that when she's on the edge of the on the, the edge of the highway there, that she she sees like sometimes when she looks at Riley, Riley has suddenly turned into like a goopy old man <laughs> demon. So it kind of is like switching back and forth. So there's obviously some sort of apparently these two guys are young. These guys that made this movie, and so they probably yeah. are scared of old people. So they think it's really <laughs> terrifying. To just put an old person in there and just give him some dead guy makeup. And because he's old, it's terrifying. I don't know. I mean, that's the only thing I can figure. Because why would the demon in its natural form look like an old human? Maybe female sometimes. Maybe male sometimes. I, it didn't make any sense. I didn't. Yeah. Just look, I guess, just because it looked cool, I guess. Yeah, that was the same one. So whenever she went into the shunting, that was the one that was like holding Riley from behind yeah. and like caressing him. Yeah. And then and then it was the that was the same one that appeared to her in the bed. It's like it's just their skin has that like flaky yellowness, so it's like 
it's just covered in one giant booger scab. I don't know. The 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 appearance of like the ghosts weren't nearly as scary as the appearance of the actors when they uh got possessed, yeah. like the thing they did with their eyes and with their skin. It was like that's fucking awesome. And then the actual ghosts are like, "Oh, that's just kind of a a gross scabby guy." Okay, that's fine. I'm probably going to take away the production thing from my ratings because I don't give a fuck and and put scary in there because this movie wasn't scary at all (laughs) yeah yeah it it wasn't scary like whenever this movie was really firing it was it was funny and engaging like that scene where they're having a party and it's a montage of them going around and doing the possession thing that was the highlight of the movie. Yeah. I love that scene. That scene was a masterpiece, and that would have been the great centerpiece for a dynamic short film. But instead, they str- like strung it out into a feature length, and it just didn't do the things it needed to do to deserve all of that, all those minutes. I feel like those two, the two brothers, really are fairly douchey and kind of broy, like, yeah. and that does come through in the film. But at the same time, I think it has it has its own kind of charm to it. It reminds me a lot of Smile for some reason, and it's definitely yep. inferior to Smile. Even though I probably gave it a higher rating because I'm an idiot. I, we didn't do Smile, but <laughs> we didn't do Smile. But if I, it, but I don't, I don't know. I really enjoyed Smile. I I did not like the end of it though. So maybe no, yeah, at all. Like this 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 ending, I didn't really care for either. But if the rest of the film had been kick-ass, I probably would have hated the ending. It's just that the rest of the film was, you know, I don't know. I just rated it high, I guess, because I enjoyed it. That's that's the basic thing. And that's perfectly valid. Yeah, for, for me, like, it was the first time I watched it through, it was purely enjoyable. And it's still, still after rewatching it. I, I love watching this movie. It's a lot mm. of fun. It's, it is. It's a very sensory engagement experience. True. It's it, it keeps you into it. it. Like, these guys, like got their chops making youtube videos they they know their craft on stuff like that but what they didn't know is how to make a long story and that's That's where this fell apart and that only fell apart when i like stopped and paid attention because like by the end of watching it the first time i was like wait what was that thing and so i had to like go back and look for it and going back and looking for it i was like yeah that doesn't make sense that doesn't need to be there there's a scene with her talking to her aunt that serves no storytelling purpose it's literally just getting some some schmutz on the thing that that scene was so inconsequential that i literally do not remember it yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah like when you said it i was like she talked to her aunt i don't even remember that (laughs) yeah, <laughs> and I still don't. I it, because I didn't give a shit. It's completely irrelevant. But yeah, I mean, I still liked it. I still think it was a great movie, or a very, very good movie. It's just it had some some continuity problems. It did, uh, but th- do they explain why she doesn't really like her dad or why nope. she's she's like upset with him? I guess, but they don't really explain why. I thought the way he was talking to her, I thought it was because he was a dick. But he wasn't yeah. a dick. She just was, she was the dick. I, I, don't, I guess she was just butt hurt because her mom passed away and she just wanted to be mad at someone and he was the easiest target, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. These guys, yeah. they, they need to be careful with deep emotions because I don't think that's their purview. <laughs> yeah. 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 They were really like stretching for it. Like, is this how humans feel about stuff? I don't know. I'll drink another steel reserve and find out. <laughs> But, you know, having said that, I mean, this movie is getting rave reviews. And one of the things that I've read over and over and over is that the end is devastating. And I'm just here to tell you that it is not (laughs) fucking devastating. That is not a devastating ending. If you want to see a (laughs) devastating ending, go see Don't Look Back or, you know, something where the ending just makes you like you like I got to clean my pants out now because I just shit myself. This movie does not make you shit yourself. No. No, it just not, it's not a pants shittingly good ending. <laughs> it's not. And, you know, I mean, I guess it shares that with Smile because I didn't like the ending of that either. Um, no. And I and then I think then I think about Barbarian didn't really care for the ending of that one either. I th- thought they Man. just ran aground with that ship. I don't know. Yeah, that movie could stand in like the fucking pantheon if they had nailed the ending. It would be. That movie would would last, I think, and it probably will anyway, just because it's 
the first half is pretty much perfection. Like, yeah. it's so tense and so creepy and so fucked up. And then it just completely does a 180. And Justin Long is great. And then the ending just sucks balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we could we could probably do a whole podcast called Loathsome Thit, and it's just where we review the first half of horror movies. Loathsome. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, if if we review just the first half of this movie, th- we'd be like, "Wow, this is the greatest horror movie that's ever been made," except for Barbarian. <laughs> If, if Barbarian had been a short film and ended right at that point, it would it would definitely be among the greatest horror films ever made. <laughs> Absolutely. It's so good, the first half. And it I really like that they shift gears, but that first half is just impeccable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, oh, so good. Yeah. All right. That's a 7.4 out of 10. Load some things from us. It's not going to crack our top 10, but... I think we both agree that it was a completely enjoyable viewing experience. You should watch it. It's uh, it's great. Now on to another segment that we like to call. Whoa, what else, what did, else we did we do? I listened to a bunch of, you know, what am I listening to? I listened to this uh, Richard Lehman book. Richard Lehman is like, you know, kind of like horror royalty. He was notorious for being one of the big splatterpunk guys back in the 90s. But nice. this book that I chose to listen to, which was the first book of his that I've gotten into, it's called Savage and it's about it's about this kid that is basically hiding under the bed when Jack the Ripper kills his fifth canonical victim and just like, you know, that one that he just had the time to do whatever he wanted. Um, so the kid basically ends up chasing him and they, they both end up on a boat and they end up in the United States and he's like chasing him across the U S to the, to the, to Arizona essentially. So he's like going through the wild West. It's pretty cool. It was a cool story. It wasn't great, but it was good. And it definitely wasn't splatter punk. And then I found out later that that's the only book he did that wasn't splatter punk. Oh, nice. I I was like, well, I, was kind of hoping for Splatterpunk because that's what I was expecting. <laughs> Anyways, nice. I don't know, what, what have you been getting into? It's probably more than me. Did you end up watching um, The Fall of the House of Usher? I have not. I've heard it's really good. Damn, that would have been good because there were there's a lot of overlap with this movie. Other than the actual movie Society, I would say this movie and The Fall of House Usher probably have close second for uh, quality shunting scenes. Wow, interesting. Yeah. I, you know, some of the other Mike Flanagan adaptations just didn't do it for me, you know. And so, but overall, I like Mike Flanagan a lot. And yeah. uh, you know, and then I saw the trailer for this, and it was just like, what? This looks amazing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess it was pretty good. I wouldn't say that. No. Really? Oh <laughs> goddamn it! <laughs> it's, at, at the end of the first episode, you're like, oh, okay, I'm interested. I'm interested. And then at the end of the Second episode, you're like, oh, wait, I know any Mike Flanagan series. I know exactly what the plot of this entire show is now going to be. And I don't know if I'm really down to, like, watch it go through one at a time. You know how the Haunting of Hill House, where it's like each episode follows a different sibling? Yeah. Well, the House of Usher is a family with a bunch of different siblings. So, guess... Guess how the episodes are organized. That's uh, a big reason why I didn't finish The Haunting of Hill House, because I, uh, to be quite honest, I fucking hated it. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. the last episode's so good. <laughs> really? I couldn't yeah. I couldn't get that far. I couldn't get into it. I just, I got to that point where I'm like, and we're done. It was the yeah. same with, <laughs> that's how I felt about American Horror Story, which I trudged through the first fucking season. And it was okay, but... Then I started the second season like an idiot, and I was just like, this is fucking terrible. This series <laughs> sucks. I mean, I think of those two as being complete opposites of each other. Yeah, that's true. This was not my favorite Mike Flanagan thing. It's Damn. also, each member of the family represents a very on-the-nose social villainy. Like, mm. like this one, oh, this one's... Uh, spins the evil family's publicity to the press. <laughs> this one just 
parties and does sex drugs all the time. And then this, and then there's like an episode where the mom, we, we get this reveal that the mom's like, actually, I'm not even into pharmaceuticals. I'm all about algorithms. Did you know that one day we'll use algorithms to write movies and TV shows? And it's like, oh, fuck you. Get out of here. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just it, the whole show is just each family member of Usher is a different social uh like cultural villain that we have to watch get annihilated in a variously uh edgar Allan poe manner i mean that's cool i guess but i don't know that i i don't i know i'm gonna watch it anyway but I, it yeah. doesn't sound like it's very promising yeah yeah i mean it, it's it's all mike flanagan he does cool stuff with it and it's obvious that he loves edgar Allan poe so if you're an edgar Allan poe like me where you've read all of the shit and you're like ooh a reference ooh a reference oh Oh fuck yeah! Look at that reference. So it's like the the director is the or the 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 lawyer that's suing the family is fucking the the detective like from the purloined letter. Mm-hmm. Uh, each episode is that's like cool. the black cat, the the red mask, of blah, 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 the cask of Amontillado. Like all of the hits are here. All of the characters are named like Lenore and you mm-hmm. know like shit like that. So Annabelle Lee is in here. Like they're oh all, wow. It's it's all that. Is there a lady whose head is held on by a ribbon? Oops! Spoiler alert. <laughs> I, I cannot say, but Mark Hamill is in it, and he that's cool. Is uh, the best character in the whole show? Uh, that's not a surprise. He's a fucking yeah. great character actor. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I figured for our next episode, maybe we go ahead and review. Uh, Damian Rugna's When Evil Lurks. Ooh. Oh, yes. I've heard that movie is really good, the new one. Oh, that's cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to that movie. I actually had forgotten about it, and yeah. I when I first read about it, I got really excited because that movie looked really badass, so now I'm glad that we're covering it. That comes out next Friday for us, and last Friday for you, our sweet, sweet listeners. <laughs> So go out there and watch the movie. It's on Shutter right now. (laughs) What the hell was that? (gasps) Yeah, it's good. Talk us out, John. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm sorry you all have to die.